I am here with the living legend in the Fort Hood real estate world. How are you today? I'm fabulous, doing wonderful. I'm glad that it's trying to get back to a little bit of summer weather because that's where that's my jam. Can't stand yeah. the cold. So I'm happy today. It's now, I saw you. I saw you shaking your head. So you must not, you might not be a self-proclaimed legend, but in the in our circles, I'll say this, nobody has anything bad to say about you, your business, or the way you guys go about your thing. That is, that's there's something to be said there. Well, I appreciate that. I really do. It's 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 weird to hear, but I do appreciate that. <laughs> that, that, that I'm learning how to take compliments right. and say thank you. So thank you for saying that. I appreciate that's that. That's awesome. That means you've just been doing your job. And so Nikki actually well, did my mom's loan, like technically my mother-in-law, but we don't do in-laws in my family because we we family. And that was actually our first time working together. And I want to bring that back to what we were saying earlier is your reputation. So when it was time for my family to come in and move to Texas, you, when I asked around about you and even to he getting here today, like it was your reputation that preceded you for being an expert in your field and like also not setting people up for failure because a lot of times people just want to bring in somebody and get the loan and they don't necessarily go through all the checks and balances that it takes to make sure that like, it's going to close. And one of the things that my partner Ryan will say about you is like, if she says it's good, it's good. And so that level of trust, I think is, is just amazing. Well, now that's super important to me because this can be a very, very stressful um, transaction for people that don't buy and sell homes every day. So that's most consumers. So it is very, very important for me to give speedy responses and to uncover things that may present a hiccup up front. And just because it's a hiccup, it doesn't mean that it's not something that we, you know, can't work around, but we need to know that up front. So yeah. I think that it's anybody's job in this industry to, you know, be an advocate for their clients that way and do the work up front for sure. I love that. How long have you been doing uh, VA loans? Oh, gosh, um, probably almost 20 years. Wow. I mean, the gray hair already ages me. But yeah, um, off and on, I took a little bit of a hiatus um, after the crash in 2007, 2008, and then came back about 10 years ago. Yeah. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. Quick question that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Do you think we're about to see another 2008, 2000? No, yeah. not at all. Okay. So this is this what's going on is totally different. Um, the biggest difference that I want people to realize, and especially our consumers and the media is doing a horrible job of explaining what's going on. They are doing an absolute horrible job. They want to instill fear in us for some reason. And I don't understand why. So whatever with that. But the biggest difference from 2007, 2008 crash to what's going on right now is that values tanked almost overnight. So not only were people not able to pay or, you know, their monthly mortgage, they were also losing the value in their homes. And so they lost out on options. Mm. Here, yes, there's been um, a slow down of the market, partly, of course, because of rates, um, which I would love to have another conversation about that. But that's another whole story. But the market's definitely slowing down. But people are keeping the value in their home. Not yeah. only are they keeping the values, they're still actually appreciating at a very good level. Yeah. So it's still a perfect time to buy. I don't think it compares at all to what was happening in 2007, 2008. Not at all. If you lose, so if you lose 10%, 15% value after you just gained 60% in the past two years, you, di you didn't really lose. You right. didn't really lose anything. And a lot of people are retaining that. And I, yeah, I just think that's super important. So a bunch of our viewers are military. They're coming into the area. Uh, a lot of them have not used their VA loan entitlements before. And I know you and I both hear a lot of craziness, but I wanted to spend our time today maybe debunking three or four VA loan myths so that people can have the real information and know that like actually calling one of us is better than Google. I would love to talk about that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to just fire them out at you. Okay. Okay. So uh, one is I cannot get another VA loan because I already used it 
or I lost my entitlement in a foreclosure. That is such a good one. And that is a huge, huge, huge myth. Not only can you use your VA loan multiple times, you can have multiple homes at the same time. And the VA loan limits, because they increase every year, um, right now, some people, you could probably even have three VA home loans at one wow. time. Wow. Now, of course, there's going to be different you know, ways to go about that. We have to run a calculation and see how much entitlement you have left over for each home. But you can definitely have more than one and maybe even three if you find the right sales prices. Nice. Yeah. And I think it's always important to say like these are rules of thumb and yeah. everybody's situation is different. So you really need like a specific situational breakdown to know like what you can do. But yes. the rule of thumb is you can get more than one house with those yeah. entitlements. And I always tell people, it's a funny example that I always use, but a lot of times we tend to get advice from, I'm going to call this family member, Aunt Sally, right? So we tend to get um, advice from Aunt Sally and Aunt Sally bought one home and maybe five years ago. So I love Aunt Sally to death. She's probably a great, great person, but she doesn't know what's going on right now and yep. how you can use your VA benefit. So it's always best to get in front of a you know an industry professional um, because the times change and the rules do too. Yep. So it's best to just get in front of somebody so that you can learn what's going on with your particular situation for sure. Yep, and it, and you don't have to be obligated or married to them like to ask questions. And you yep. don't ever have to even buy a house. It's, uh, like it's okay to just ask questions. So all right, I'm gonna hop into the second one. VA loans have higher interest rates than let's say a FHA or a conventional. Yep. That's another huge myth. And more times than not, normally VA loans have the lowest interest rates out there. Now, of course, you know, our, our economy is very, very complex and things do change. Um, right now, I would say that VA loans are a little bit closer to um, conventional loans, but they're still lower. Mm -hmm. So rule of thumb for sure. And debunking of that myth, VA rates are actually normally lower than any of the other loan programs that are out there. Uh, another one is it's very difficult for a house to pass a VA appraisal. Yeah, that's a huge one. And I think that probably stems from maybe investors. I don't know where that comes from, to be honest with you. Um, yes, there's going to be an appraiser that goes out there, but those same appraisers that are going out to appraise your um, FHA home or your conventional loan, they're, they're VA appraisers as well. It's the yep. same person. So they go out there and their main job is to figure out, you know, comps to figure out is the home being sold at a um, value that that's going in the neighborhood. And then they're going to check and make sure that the home is habitable. So if, yes, if there's a big hole in the wall or something like that, that might propose a little bit of a challenge for you as far as a VA loan, but that's going to be for FHA and conventional as well. Yeah. So the home just has to be habitable. That's really what they're looking for. It's yeah. it's not much more difficult. It's actually better because they have they're held to certain time frames and everything when they're doing a VA appraisal. There's more rules set in place to protect the veteran. I think yeah, that's awesome. I, that's definitely something I, I didn't think about or hadn't touched on that, like the fact that there are actually more systems set in place to protect the veteran, and that is the purpose of the appraisal anyway, is to protect the veteran. And what I tell what I tell my clients, whether it's buyer or seller, what that appraiser is looking for on a VA loan appraisal, he's looking for wood rot. He's looking, uh, he's looking for trip hazards. So if the floor, like if the carpet is pulled up, like you need some floor there, there has to be some sort of floor in there. Right. And like beyond that foundation and roof issues, but he's not going to nitpick on every tiny thing that that's going on with the house. And it's actually not hard for the house nope. to pass that. I agree. That's a big myth. And that helps you out because, hey, seller got to fix that. Seller got to fix it. Let the so, negotiations begin. <laughs> yeah. Since I am using a VA loan, it's all zero money. It's There's no money involved. A VA loans a free loan. That is a big myth. And it's it's that one's kind of hard for me to break it down to people because they are so excited when they're finally you know, decide to go put in for their loan and they come to me and I start explaining to them what the potential cost could be for closing. And the first response is, well, I'm not responsible for closing costs. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a veteran. I have a VA loan. The VA loan guarantees the financing. Mm -hmm. It does not say that there's not going to be any closing costs. 
There's zero down payment most of the time, that's for sure, but there are closing costs associated with, associated with every loan. There's going to be appraisal costs. There's going to be title company fees. There's going to be um, prepaids for insurance, all of those things that are customary for any loan. The biggest difference is, is that the VA will allow the seller or someone else to pay those closing costs on behalf of the veteran. So nice. if it's negotiated between, you know, the consumer and the agent, if it's negotiated, then it could be zero money down or zero closing costs, but that has to be negotiated because there no. are costs in involved with any sort of financing. It's just who's going to pay those costs. Nice. That's why you need a good agent to help negotiate that down for you. Is there a maximum amount that a seller is allowed to contribute to a buyer's closing cost for VA loan specific? That is a very, very good question. And I'm definitely going to advise anybody to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with their lender about it. But the rule of thumb or the rule is that the seller can pay up to 4% in concessions towards a VA buyer's closing cost. But the VA loan calculates concessions differently than any other program, meaning that there are some closing costs that are considered customary and those are not included in the 4%. Now, what is included and what people don't even know that they can ask for, let's say that you need um, help paying off a debt. On a VA loan, the seller, builder, can pay off debt as long as it's in within the 4% concession. Wow, you just learned to be something. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So I think, man, to me, that was that was a huge one that I think a lot of people can really, really benefit from. I got one more. I have to have a 700 credit score in order to get a VA loan. Yeah, that one is so unfortunate. And there's so many people out there that are just scared to even talk to me. And I'm so nice. You know, but they're so scared to talk to lenders because they're either embarrassed because they don't have a perfect credit score or they're embarrassed because they don't have a lot of money in the bank. Welcome to America. Yep. yep absolutely. <laughs> you know, it's 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 OK, but every lender has their minimum credit score. The VA actually does not have one, but every lender has one. So um, we've been as low as 580 before. Now, is it a given that just because you meet that criteria that you're going to get approved for a loan? No, it's not. Right. But it's still very good. It's it's good for yourself to still talk to a lender because if for some reason you're not there, then any good lender should be giving you advice on how to prepare for homeownership in the future. And yes. just because you have an 800 score doesn't mean that you're going to qualify either. Other factors at play. 100 percent. So but. it's always good just to get in front, you know, bite the bullet, get in front of a lender, figure out what your unique situation is. And if for some reason you're not ready, we can get you there. Right. There's not much that we can't overcome. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about like the process with this and you can't skip the process, but you can prepare for it. 100%. And, like, there are some things that are going to be universal that you're going to have to go through in order to get that house. But you can take a lot of the stress and the weight off of yourself by getting out in front and preparing yourself before you ever even get to a place where you're about to buy a house. And we we're better than chat GPT. Like we we got way better answers that are tailor fit to your situation. I, I think loan VA loans, any loan. <clears throat> It's a bespoke process and it's really important for you to look at it like that and like actually go in and have that conversation. I think we're, I think we've beat the, the horse dead on that, but <clears throat> like we're dispelling these myths, but it's a myth for a reason. And it probably happened to somebody based on their individual situation. So Aunt it's probably, Sally. and then Aunt Sally told them and scared them. <laughs> and it's a vicious cycle. Yep. Let's dispel the misinformation. All right. That was that was super fun. I learned actually I, I learned way more than I thought I would. I'm not a VA expert. I've done I've done a ton of VA loans, but I am a house guy. I always say I'm the house guy. That's the money lady right there. So that that's who you want to talk to. Is there anything else that you would like to uh, to get across to anybody who's watching this today who might be thinking about using their VA benefits to buy a house? So there's so many good. It's one of my favorite programs. It's the most forgiving when it comes to credit. Um, and now people used to think that there were even limits on how much they can buy. Um, the VA loan limit is non-existent unless you currently have a VA home loan. Mm. Um, our current limit right now is $2 million. Can you believe wow. that you can use VA financing 
if you have enough entitlement and qualify and wow. purchase up to $2 million. So that still blows my mind. And that's yeah. like, you know, a newer development, maybe a couple of years now. Um, but a lot of people still don't know that. So I always like to leave people feeling encouraged because I've just run across so many consumers that are just nervous about this process. But it's something that I think is so important and it's the biggest vehicle and that to me, one of the easiest vehicles to acquire wealth Yes, is through real estate. Even with the ebbs and flows, the people that were not scared to buy, you know, two years ago are doing amazing right now. Yes. So yes. my thing is that I would just want to leave people encouraged if they are on the fence for any reason, then have a conversation and talk about whatever your objections are and then get with some professionals that can help you start to acquire wealth through real estate because I it's for that. everybody. I love that. It's for everybody. That's yep. what that's my mission here on this channel is to make sure that everybody has access to the best real estate information with regards to Colleen Fort Hood, right? Like you can go, real estate's hyper local and, and like you don't just have to live here to get a VA loan. But I want to make sure that people who are moving here or living here or leaving have the best information possible about our real estate market. And I love that. I love that thought. And I tell the stories all the time about people who weren't scared to buy two and three years ago that are winning right now and yep. they, they, they're living life on their own terms. So yeah, if, if you have that opportunity, using that, those VA loan benefits, I think it's amazing. Another, another quick one is, and it's a distinction that you've made a couple of times, the VA doesn't give you the loan, right? You give the loan and it is VA backed, meaning if the person defaults, the VA is saying they're going to cover that. Up to 25%. So a lot of people think that, you know, they've done their time in the military, which first of all, thank you so much for that. Absolutely. Um, and once you're entitled to your benefit, you still have to work with the lender to actually give you the loan. The VA is not giving out loans. They're giving out um, eligibility or mm. guarantee. And basically how that works is that the VA is telling the lender, we will guarantee up to 25% if something happens and the veteran defaults on the loan. So that's why lenders will do them because the VA is backing them, but the VA is not the one that's um, writing the check. Nice. I could do this all day with you. I think <laughs> I've, I've learned so much already and we're like at almost 20 minutes. My average video is five. So oh, wow. I, I'm, I hope <laughs> that somebody watches this all the way through though, because you dropped so many gems and I hope they rewind it back and reach out. I'm going to put your contact in the description and you don't have to get married to Nikki in order to ask her questions. That's factual. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Much this for was fun. I appreciate it. Here. Thank you. It's, it's so it, it's an honor to have you here and uh, yeah, I hope this helps somebody. Same. All right.